Hello, welcome to the Sound of Science, the place where we deconstruct unscientific bogus and silly scams. Let's go get them. Hello, you wonderful stardust. Today I stumbled upon this video in which Christian apologist Frank Turek is making a really bad argument, as usual. Sweet mother of Gandalf, I don't like Frank Turek. He keeps making the same logical fallacies over and over again in front of his audiences, despite the fact that he has been publicly corrected on this numerous times. In this case, Frank Turek is trying to explain why the position of not believing in a god or lacking belief in a god is a bad position. Let's listen. Here's the proposition. God exists. Do you agree with that proposition? Do you disagree with that proposition? Or you don't know? Now, this is a typical example of the trickery that Frank Turek uses. His claim is a God exists. And then he gives you three options. You agree, you disagree, or you don't know. Beware of theists who try to fool you with this trick. If you agree, then you're no longer an atheist. If you disagree, then Turek will ask you why you disagree and bring you in a position in which you have to come up with arguments why you think that a god does not exist. And maybe that isn't your position at all. If you say, I don't know, Turek will say that that position is meaningless. What is the secret to this trick? That is his use of the words agree and disagree. First of all, agree and disagree are opposites. They are only the extremes of a spectrum. There is also, I don't agree with that. That's different from disagreeing. And Turak fails to mention that. But there is more to it because in general, the words agree and disagree are used when discussing subjective ideas and opinions. People who agree are in favor of an idea or an opinion. People who disagree they do the opposite, and they often express a strong rejection of an idea or an opinion. And they usually wish to propose an alternative view to that idea or opinion. Rome is the most beautiful city in the world. No, I disagree. Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. That is how we commonly use the words agree and disagree. And Frank Turek now tries to copy and paste these words into a totally different context, which doesn't really work. When we make claims about reality, like there is a pink elephant in the next room, then we usually do not say, I agree with that, or I disagree with that. We either believe that claim or we don't believe that claim. So agreeing or disagreeing with the claim a god exists is not really applicable. It's not an opinion or an idea. It's a claim about reality. And our response to such reality claims can be best described with I believe that claim or I do not believe that claim or I don't know or I do know. Turek is really trying to force atheists here to use other language. He tries to force people into using the words that Turek wants them to use. And of course, we shouldn't. I don't believe that a god exists is a perfectly fine position. Okay, well, my point is, is that atheists today are trying to say, I have a lack of belief in God. For me, that's just saying something about your psychological state. It doesn't say anything about the real world out there. It doesn't say whether or not God exists. You're simply saying, I lack a belief in God. True. Well, this water bottle lacks a belief in God. And there we go again. We've all heard this over and over again, and it's really embarrassing that one of the most prominent Christian apologists is still using the, a rock is an atheist, or a bottle of water is an atheist nonsense. It has been debunked a million times. By the way, Turek is debating a young man here who totally debunks this gibberish yet again. Listen to this. If, if, we, if we define atheism as a lack of belief in God or whatever, sure. then we're not really saying anything because everything that doesn't have the capacity to believe anything could be called an atheist then. And a water bottle could also be called a vegan if you say it's something that doesn't eat animal parts. As far as that label is being applied, it's ineffective in that case. I would say atheism is related only to those things that have the capacity to believe in the first okay. place. We can argue over definitions all day long. 
But then don't, if you don't like that, Mr. Turek. If you're waving this away, and in this case you're literally trying to do that, then don't start a discussion about definitions. It is you, Mr. Turek, who is focusing on an attempt to push the meaning of the word atheism in a direction that totally distracts from any meaningful debate. If your interpretation of the word atheism leads you to the conclusion that a water bottle is an atheist, then your interpretation guess what it's flawed and then it's time to listen to the interpretation of an actual atheist like this young man who very clearly explains to you in what context you should position the word atheism it only applies to entities who have the capacity to believe something if you don't understand that mr Turek, you will find yourself in a very confusing world because your glasses that you're wearing right now mr Turek, you must think that they are very hungry then since they haven't eaten anything yet today and your shirt, Mr. Turek, the shirt that you're wearing, you must think it's very tired because it didn't sleep tonight. That is what you get when you attribute random properties to objects that can't have those properties. So, of course, a bottle of water is not an atheist, because atheism is an intellectual position that can only be taken by a human being, because they've got the capacity to think. So, please, for once and for all, Mr. Trek, stop this a water bottle as an atheist nonsense, because if your fans are going to follow your example, they will all look like complete fools. Let's continue. Let me put it this way. It's easy to smell a rotten egg. It's hard to lay a better one. Okay? So if someone has a position over there that I think is wrong, I can throw eggs at it, and I can try and diffuse and say, that's a bad argument, that's a bad argument. But I then still have the burden of proof to say, well, what is my explanation for the way things are the way they are? No, Mr. Drek, this is another thing you totally don't understand. A burden of proof only applies to a claim, and more specifically, person A only has the burden of proof for a claim that person A makes himself. There is no obligation or even a good reason for person A to come up with an alternative explanation for a bad explanation that person B has given. That would imply that person A would have the obligation to do person B's work. If you claim that the world is created by a god, guess what? Then you have the burden of proof to demonstrate that this god exists in the first place and that she created this world. If I demonstrate that your arguments are bad, I don't have to produce an alternative explanation for how the world came into existence. That is your job. It is you who thought something needed an explanation. If your first explanation fails, perhaps try another one. If I claim that your arguments are bad, I only have to prove that your arguments are bad, because that is what my claim was about. So, this is really not going very well, Mr. Drek. You are twisting and turning the meaning of words. You're trying to pull the embarrassing a bottle is an atheist trick, and you're trying to falsely put your own burden of proof on others. This is not going very well. It surely can't get any worse. If uh, I'm a detective, and atheist Michael Shermer is a detective, and we come on a dead body, Oh no, sweet mother of Gandalf. He's not going to do the detective thing. Apparently he thinks he hasn't properly exposed himself as a fool yet. And I say, okay, I'm looking at all the evidence here. I think Candidate X did it. And Michael Shermer says, no, Candidate X did it. Or didn't do it. That's, that's the wrong, that's the, that's, he's not the murderer. And I say, okay, who is the murderer then? And he says, well, I just lack a belief that your guy's the murderer. Is he a good detective? No. Well, as to be expected, Turek is yet again totally misrepresenting atheism. First, you act as if the atheist is not looking at the evidence. And of course, atheists do look at the evidence. And if the evidence is good evidence, they will tell you, and they might agree with you. If your evidence is bad evidence, then the atheist will tell you as well. Now, based upon earlier experience we have with Christian apologists, Turek's evidence for candidate X being a murderer 
is something along the line of, well, I've got this old book that says Candidate X did it, and, well, a dead body can't come from nothing, so X must have created it. And the cut in the body was exactly fine-tuned for the shape of the knife, so X must have stabbed him. All of which, of course, doesn't prove anything. It's worthless evidence. So the atheist would tell Turek that the evidence sucks. So the atheist wouldn't say X didn't do it. The atheist would say, I don't believe your claim that X did it for lack of evidence. Your evidence doesn't even demonstrate that X exists in the first place. An atheist would then say, as has been explained to you a million times, show me some better evidence. That is what an atheist would say in this comparison. But that sounds too reasonable, doesn't it? So Turek, again, has to misrepresent atheism to make us look unreasonable. Come on now, this really is pathetic. Shooting down my suspect isn't enough. If he's a good detective, he has to give reasons as to why candidate Y is the murderer. Not just to say that your guy is the wrong guy. That's all I'm saying, Scott. Turek, you would be the worst detective in the history of detectives. If your colleague demonstrates that your evidence is bad, then you should thank him because they just prevented you from making the disastrous mistake of accusing the wrong guy. They just made an enormous contribution to your knowledge about this case, and thanks to your colleague, you're not causing immeasurable damage. But no, that's not good enough for you. You're now demanding that the guy who just saved your ass does what you yourself couldn't do, and your fans applaud you for this nonsense. I guess that will encourage you to say even more stupid things at your next meeting. And while you are contemplating about how to fool your audience, let me set the record straight for once and for all. Atheists do not believe your claim that a god exists. Why? Because your evidence sucks. That is a perfectly fine position, and it doesn't require any burden of proof regarding your God claim. The only obligation atheists have in this case is to show that your evidence is bad. And if they do that, you should thank them for keeping you from making even more mistakes. Of course, you will never do that, but you're welcome anyway. Oh, and to my viewers, I would say, please consider to like and subscribe. The more you show your appreciation, the more of these charlatan apologists I will take on. Thanks.